When I was in my late teens, I worked in a factory. 6am until 2pm. A boring job, but it paid, so I stuck with it. This story happened mid-November. As you can imagine, it was cold and dark at 5.45am, walking to work. I was also running late, so instead of the normal trudge of cold, annoyed factory workers heading to work, I was alone. Or at least I thought I was alone anyway. I heard footsteps behind me a few times, but shrugged it off as another person heading to work. Looking at my watch, I swore and turned down a side street, heading for a phone box to call work and tell them I was going to be at least 20 minutes late. The footsteps behind me had stopped, so I assumed whoever was heading the same way as me must have carried on going. Most people, unless they lived in the area, wouldn't even know the phone box was here. I get to the phone and I'm looking for 20p in my pocket when I notice a cat looking up at me. Being polite, I said good morning to him. He meowed and looked across the street then looked up at me again. I frowned and looked where the cat was looking and saw a man standing under the street lamp grinning at me. As he caught me spotting him, he headed towards me. I bolted. The walk from home to where I am takes 25 minutes. When I looked at my watch, it was 5.45 a.m. When I got home, it was 5.50 a.m. I don't remember the paths. For all I knew in my panic, I might have run across the frozen lake. Once my family calmed me down enough to understand what I was saying, they called 999 and the police came to my home within the hour. I described him and where he'd been. They caught him the next morning. I didn't need to identify him as his six other victims all did. They hadn't been lucky enough to have a friendly cat alert them. He beaten and raped all six of them. The police had been staking out his stalking grounds, so he moved to a different route to look for women alone in the dark. This happened to me back in October 2010. I was 19 at the time, living with my aunt and uncle in a small town in New Mexico and attending a community college. I was in one of my classes and the girl who was sitting next to me was making small talk, getting to know me and it was going pretty well. When class was over, we started talking in the hallway. She gave me her number and said, I would like to take you out on a date if you want to. And I agreed. The next day I continued to text her and we got to know each other even more. She said she was 19 years old and studying the same major that I was. She then told me she's a very good cook and invited me over to her house for the date, to which I agreed again. The house was 30 miles outside of town. When I finally got there, something was off about the place. The house looked abandoned and run down. Just when I was about to turn around, thinking I had the wrong address, she came out of the house and said, Hey, come on in. Sorry about the mess. I just bought this house like a week ago and we're renovating it. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you before. I acted calm and kindly responded. It's okay, don't worry about it. When I got inside, the surreal feeling that something was off had returned. The voice in my head telling me to get out whilst you still can. But I ignored it. We began eating and the food was amazing. After eating, we had a couple of drinks. We got pretty silly and I remembered her rubbing my arms. And we started making out. She was being romantic and telling me what I wanted to hear, whilst coercing me towards a different room. It was really dark, and after a few seconds, she pushed me onto the floor. She said it was an accident, but it seemed like she did it on purpose. My back was hurt pretty bad in the fall, and I couldn't get up. Oh my god, I'll go get help, she announced alarmingly. She closed the door, and moments later, I heard a low moaning sound. I gathered all of my strength to get up and investigate what it was, but it was super dark. I had an iPhone 4 at the time, so I used it as a flashlight and found the light switch by the door. Then when I looked around the room, I saw a man tied up in the corner on a hospital bed. I removed the duct tape from his mouth and demanded to know what was going on. He responded in an erratic, whispery tone. Yo man, break the chains and untie me. We need to get the fuck out of here right now. She's not who you think she is. By then I was freaking out. 
and my back was still hurting. I loosened him from the gurney and removed the chains. We broke through the door and dashed for the exit. Upon making it outside, we ran. I ditched my car and whilst running, I had the thought to turn and look back at the house. I spotted her in the upstairs window, glaring at us. We eventually made it to the gas station, next to the nearby small town, and I continued my interrogation. He retorted, Yo man, this girl is a killer. She murdered people. Let me start over. He regained his breath. I met her online on a dating app. She said she was a nurse and we were hitting it off. She invited me to her house and I agreed to come. We were drinking, but I didn't know she spiked my drink. He explained he then passed out, and when he awoke, he was chained to a gurney. He saw her cutting out a person's heart, kidneys, and other organs. At one point, he could hear men talking somewhere in the house, and believed she must have been selling the body parts. Whilst there, he saw a lot of dead bodies. I told him we needed to call the cops. He freaked out, and yelled, No man, don't do it, the cops are in on it too! He explained, when she was alone with him. She told him that there's no hope for him, and if he managed to escape, then the cops would shoot him dead. I agreed to not call the cops, partly out of fear in case she was telling the truth, but also because I was done with this and just wanted to put it behind me. We talked for a few more minutes, then he was picked up by a friend and left. I never saw him or that girl again. The next day, me and my cousin went to pick up my car. When we arrived, it looked like the house was empty. We saw some neighbours outside, a few houses down, and approached them to try and gather some information. They didn't know of any girl owning the house. In fact, it had been empty for several months. Thoroughly creeped out, I just got into my car and left. Now I did know her name, so I spoke to a police officer I trusted, who I knew through family a few weeks later, and tried to do a police report. There was nobody named Emily Parry in that area, and her phone number was either fake or untraceable. The other guy also mentioned on her dating profile, it said she was 32 years old, not 19, and her name was Kate. It scared me even more, and I was truly shocked. I'm very careful around people I don't know. After this experience, I didn't really want to talk to anyone new, particularly women I wanted to date. A couple of weeks later, I got accepted to UCLA, and now I live in California. I hope I never see that woman again. Before I continue with the final story, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to see future content from me, as well as help me in the algorithm. Thank you. So this is a story that happened to my mum's friend in Korea about 10 years ago. Every time I hear this story, I still get chills. My mum's friend lived in an apartment complex in Seoul. She was a stay-at-home mother of a young daughter, and her husband worked during the day. One day, she was coming home from running errands with her daughter, and got into the elevator in her building. Once she got in, she noticed that there was a man wearing a cap and a yellow raincoat, and he kept his head low so that she couldn't really see his face. She immediately felt really uneasy, and she made her daughter stand to her side, furthest away from the man. What made her feel even more uncomfortable was that when she pressed the button for her floor, there was no other lit number. And on top of that, she noticed that he was carrying something wrapped inside a newspaper, close to his side. Things started to click in my mum's friend's head, and she started to panic, and decided to take out her cell phone, and pretend she was calling home to her husband, who was obviously really not at home, but instead at work. She started saying things like, Oh, I'm in the elevator and about to get off. Can you get the door for me? And making it seem like her husband was waiting at home. When the elevator did reach her floor, I think she lived on the 12th floor, she quickly got off and grabbed her daughter and started to walk as fast as she could to her apartment. She noticed that the man also got off on her floor 
and were slowly following her down the hallway. When my mum's friend got to her door, she started to bang on it and shout, Hey dear, I'm home, please open the door, and kind of pretended like he was coming to answer the door. Upon seeing this, the man in the yellow raincoat started to walk away back towards the elevator. When he seemed to be far away enough, my mum's friend quickly picked up her daughter and slid open her door's passcode unit. This is usually how people got into their homes in Korea and started to frantically punch in her key code. The only problem was that the buttons would make sounds so the man knew that no one was going to answer the door for her and he turned around and started to run back towards her. My mum's friend at this point was practically screaming and when she finally got her door to open the first thing she did was throw her daughter in through the door. When she got in herself she saw that the man was pretty much inches from the door, but she managed to shut it and lock it before he could wedge his hand or weapon into the door. Afterwards, looking through the door's peephole, she saw that the man was walking away back towards the elevator. Several months later, my mum's friend was watching the news and there was coverage on the capture of a serial killer named Yu Young Chol. He used to kill a lot of prostitutes. She told my mum that she could never forget the dread she felt when she saw the two familiar yellow raincoats and hat that he was wearing when apprehended.